Hi guys. Uh, another quick one today. Thanks very much for all your project suggestions. I had this one come in the other day and it's actually something I really need to make. Um, some scrolling tongs. You can see these are the ones I've been using up till now and they're pretty useless. I got them from a sale I think and they're weak as anything. They're thin, flimsy, they keep breaking, bending. So I thought we'd have a go at making another pair. I'm going to use this 5.8 square. If I'd got 3 quarter I would have used it but this is all I've got kicking about. Um, so we're going to give it a go, see how we get on. I'm going to start off warming her up and just like my other videos on my tongs, we're going to start off on this front edge here and then work on the back edge. So about, say about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, probably about, maybe an inch and an eighth. Now unlike ordinary tongs, where we would leave that, that wide, because we want a, a point on here, we're going to narrow it down. We want to thin it down to about just under half the thickness. Not quite two thirds, and not quite half really. So we've got a fair bit of meat there still. And that's about it. That's drawn out now to about probably inch and a half-ish. So now we're going to turn it 90 degrees and give it another wallop. And so, with, like with my other tongue making video, all you do is turn it 90 degrees each time. And as long as you go the same way on both of them, you'll end up with a pair. So we've done that way, now turn it 90 degrees, I've gone to the left, give it another bash. Simple as that, you can see it coming down again, and again we want it down about half thickness-ish, it's all a bit trial and error. Alright, so we've gone one way, now you can keep thinning this down a bit because so that's going to end up as a point. I'll just give it a bit of a rough shape up. I'll get done properly a bit nearer the end. You can see where we're going with it. I want to keep a bit of meat in it so it's a little bit stronger. So now we've done one way, we've done the second way, so now we're going to do it the third way and give it another bash. So one, two, and three. I wish I had a power hammer. I'll try and keep it about the same thickness all the way back. Just tidy it all up a little bit. Like with all my projects, I think I'd probably say it, you're probably sick of me saying it. Try and keep things reasonably straight and level. It just makes life much easier. Right, that's roughly what we're looking for. I'm going to just get it warm and tidy up the uh, point and the little back bit there. point down a bit more. You don't really need these to be horrendously heavy, these tongs, because really once you've started your scroll on your former, if you're doing it on a former, after the first inch or so it holds itself, so you don't really need to be hanging on to great big heavy bits of iron when you're scrolling. But if you're using them for tweaking scrolls, pulling them you know, this way and that way just to get the final fit right then they need to be reasonably manly. 
So those last ones, I use them for all sorts, not only scrolling. And they just weren't up to it. I don't know where they came from, a sale somewhere. These should be a little bit more substantial. And so if I had three quarter inch, probably would have done it out of that. Right, so there you go. So for the, the big boys who have either got a power hammer or feel fit, they could uh, draw this whole thing out into um, a rain. But me, I've got bad hands, bad arms, so I'm going to cut it off about there and just weld a rain on. So that's what I'm going to do next. Cut it off. Get nice and warm. We'll use a bigger hammer for this. Doesn't really matter where you cut it. Simple. There you go. So now I'm going to tidy all this up, draw that out, and uh, tidy up the point before we weld on some reins. I've just realised you can't see. Sorry. So we're just getting it all down to about the right sort of size. Don't go too mad because you'll end up um, making the material almost as thin as my last ones. So don't go mad. You want to keep some meat in it. But I'm just levelling it all out, trying to get it all the same thickness. Getting that bit square rather than sort of rectangular, just tidying it up. You can see there the point's got a nice bit of meat up by the, the top there, which is where it's got a bit of strength. So I'm just going to tidy the point up. Doesn't need to be too fancy. Um, because we're going to play about with it once they're put together. And I want to get them fairly nice, sort of round. Doesn't take a lot of doing, just a bit of tickling here and there. do me. Focus, come on, focus, 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 there you go. Nothing fancy, but it'll do the job. See a bit of thickness there up the top. Lovely job. Right, so what I'm going to do now, save wasting your time, I'm going to shut the video off and make a second one. And then I'll come back once I've got the pair of them done. Right, done the second one, got them fairly similar and we're going to need to put them together but to get them to fit nicely and tight together, see they're, they're almost the same, they're similar, not 100%, but they won't fit in tight, which is like that, how I want them, because there's this edge here, that needs to be at an angle, which you could have done by holding it at that angle on the, the anvil when you were making it. But it's just something else to remember. So I generally don't bother because it just takes a couple of minutes to run a rasp across there or a grinder on both of them. Um, and Bob's your uncle, they'll fit together nicely. So I'm going to whip over to the vise and do that now. Alright, just tighten them up in there. Now I'm just going to do this with a, an old barrier's rasp. I've got loads of them kicking about. I've actually got one here with a handle on it somewhere. 
Oh well, can't find it. This one will do. Try and do it left hand you take and see. It doesn't take a lot, just about 45 degrees I suppose it is. And it doesn't need to go far. There you go, that's all you need. Flimming thing will focus again. That's it. You can just see, I've just taken that, that corner out. So I'll do that on the other one. I can find it. Where did I put that? Well, it was here a minute ago. Christ. These things disappear. And there it is. Oh. And the same again. This one's actually a bit harder. I think I might have almost case hardened this one a little bit by quenching it a bit quick. Feels a bit, a bit on the hard side. But there you go. Come on, focus. There you go. Just take that nick out. And that's all it needs. Now, you'll see now they fit together much nicer. The gap in the middle is almost closed. So now what we've got to do is try and keep them together where I want them. And drill them for a rivet. Right, the rivet I'm going to use is a 3.8, basically because I've got loads of them from making park benches. So I'm going to start off with a pilot hole. You can see I've got them wedged up here in a little drill press. I'm just going to stick a pilot through first. Yeah, definitely gone a bit hard that second one. I often find that happens if you quench something out of sort of orange, a bit of mild steel, it will actually slightly case harden it, which is good for some jobs, but other times it's a bit of a pain, like now. It's gone a bit hard. Never mind. There's your pilot, so we're now just sticking a, a 3.8. Now I don't tend to use a clearance drill for tongs because they go a bit sloppy too quickly if you use a clearance drill. So I'll try and use a spot on 3 a mm, Yeah, definitely gone a bit hard there. Oh, yeah, that's coming out blue. Never mind. Got it. Done. There you go. Stick the rivet in, see if it fits. Look at that. Lovely job. And it even moves. Right, so we've got it put together. We've got the hole drill the rivet ready for it. I wish it would focus properly. As you can see the, the rivet's a little bit too long. So before I rivet it together, come on focus. That's better. Before it, uh, I rivet it together I'm just going to whip a little bit off the top of this rivet just so it's not quite so, so long. But first of all I'm going to weld the reins on. So I'm just going to whip off and do that, and I'll be back in a second. Right, I've just put the nasty bit of splodge weld on there, and I've put more weld on it than I need. Focus, you can see. That's it, you can see there's more weld on there than you need, and that's because I'm going to hammer it back into itself and uh, try and sort of 
fade it into the from the square to the round. There's the other one, done the same sort of thing with that. I don't know why this camera's playing up to date, there you go. Much more weld than you need. Now I'm going to heat them up and forge them back into themselves. That's the beauty of MIG welding, you can just plaster it on, hammer it back out. So really it's just sort of fading the, the square into the round. Try not to do any damage to the, the top end and that's sort of giving you the idea. Keep it straight. Right. Got them both done, cleaned them up with a sander, just take the rough edges off, cut the, the uh, rivet down, and we're ready to rivet them up. Now I'm going to do it on this snap head, which is just tightened up in the vise, and I'm going to heat the uh, rivet with a gas torch. You can do it in the fire, but if you've got gas, so much easier. Just keeps it in the right spot. Doesn't need to be horrendously hot, just enough. Give it a whack. See I'm moving the hammer around in all different directions so it's really mushrooming it out. There you go. Come on camera, focus. Set. Done. Nothing fancy. But we're going to get it all hot and try and get the jaws to, to line up better and the reins to line up because you see that now they're side by side we want them one over the other so we're going to warm it up have a little play about with it see what we can do the way of lining them up So you don't need to get them horrendously warm. Squeeze them down a bit. Just knocking the jaws one over the other. Trying to keep them sort of down the centre. It's quite easy to get them all off to one side. The same with the reins. You can see they're starting to cross over now. You want to get those so that when you're handling them, they're right over you, or your hand is right over them, one above the other. Tickle the jaws about, not quite right. You can spend ages buggering about like this just to get it right, and that's you can see is much better. Still not quite going down the centre. Try and get the reins one above the other. Just fiddle about until you feel right. Now they're still moving nicely. That's about it. I'm happy with that. You can put um, different size bits of metal into the jaws if you like, and then you put it in there and then close them up. You know, get it hot, obviously, and close them up onto it if you're using a specific size. But I like them quite tightly close together. I usually use them on fairly small stuff. Now I'm going to cool them down and keep moving them. Because if you don't, you'll find sometimes they'll go tight. Lock up on you. So just keep them moving while you cool them out. If they start to go tight, take them out of the water, move them, put them back in. But there you go. Cooled out. Moving nicely. And that's about it. So I'm going to give them a clean up. They're nothing fancy. I don't know if you've actually noticed that I've actually used a bit of stainless steel for the reins. Not because I wanted to, but just because it's lying about. I've got plenty of it. So I'm going to clean them up and let you have a little look. Oh, 
there you go, nothing fancy, as I say. This took me literally half an hour, from start to finish, to make these. Um, I could have spent an awful lot more time and made them much prettier. But they're functional, they do the job, and I think you get the idea. So thanks for watching, I'll try and do another project soon.